Lieutenant Kennedy. Number two is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, where the changing of the guard takes place every 30 minutes. And the last stop will be the Robert E. Lee Mansion. It's open if you want to go inside and warm up and see it, but there's no furniture in it. You can also see the Pentagon from the edge of the uh, front lawn there. There are more than 325,000 American heroes buried here in this one cemetery. There are more than 100,000 spouses and minor children. There are close to 28 funerals a day here, seven days a week, five days a week, about 7,000 a year. This is an older section of the cemetery to the left. Headstones are all different sizes, shapes, and colors, much like cemeteries near your hometown. Starting in 1947, all new sections like this one, all newly opened sections, must have the plain white marble headstone exclusively. They weigh about 250 pounds, 42 inches high, placed in the ground 14 inches. And they're lined up in perfect rows in any direction you look, like military people standing out of tension. Right now we're approaching the Kennedy grave site. You'll find the eternal flame there, ignited the day he was buried, November 25, 1963, over 46 years ago. Wow, never gone out for practical purposes. In front of the flame are his grave sites, wife Jacqueline, and two infant children who predeceased the parents. Nearby are the grave sites of his two brothers, Robert and Edward. Both of those are marked with a plain white wooden cross. The only two wooden crosses in the entire center. It's the World War II repatriation section. These are men, mostly in World War II, perished overseas in battle and were field buried or during or after the battle. At the end of the war, their families were given the option of returning the remains to America for burial with honor and dignity on American soil. Part of about an 1,100-acre plantation inherited around the year 1800 by the grandson of George Washington, namely George Washington Park Custis. Park Custis built that yellow house above the eternal flame, now called the Arlington House, in honor of his grandfather, George Washington. That was going to be the first George Washington Memorial. You see a man on a horse. His name is Sir John Dill. He was the British liaison to America during World War II. Uh, he and Churchill were not getting along very well. So Churchill thought he'd get rid of him by sending over him, sending him over here to the U.S. Three marble trips. One unknown to World War II, next Korea, and the third one is empty. Formerly holding remains of Air Force Lieutenant Michael Blassey, shot down over Vietnam. His remains were identified 11 years ago by DNA technology. No longer unknown. His family elected to rebury him closer to home in St. Louis, Missouri. A tall soldier will march in front of the white sarcophagus exactly 21 steps and then stop precisely 21 seconds and return march 21 more steps. That's symbolic of the 21 gun salute, the highest honor that can be given at a military funeral and reserved for the president. That soldier marches 24-7, 365, doesn't stop for heat or snow like last week, doesn't stop for world events like 9-11. Up ahead, you'll see a concrete base and a ship mast. That's one of the two masts of the battleship Domain, the sinking of which started the Spanish-American War. Audie Murphy's gravesite, the most decorated enlisted soldiers immediately to your left behind this big tree. Yeah, the one on the far left is the Challenger. Astronaut, the one on the far right is the Columbia. The one in the middle is the Iran hostage rescue mission. It'll be 30 years this coming April. On the right is the original Atlantic Theater, built in 1868, replaced by the one you just saw a few moments ago in 1921. We're at the top of the mountain. 
<laughs> about 160 feet above the river level. Therefore, pursuant to the laws of gravity, discovered by, discovered by Isaac Newton, yes sir, in 1664. It's all downhill from here. You'll see that the woods are kind of very rough looking. They are not manicured at all. The park service does absolutely nothing to them. They want the woods to look much like they did 200 years ago when this was a forest and crop plantation. Tall headstone, about 15 foot high, that's William Howard Taft, our 27th president from the state of Ohio. Also, chief judge of the Supreme Court, the only person ever to do that. Next to this tree on the right, you'll see a circle with a wreath and a little bird on it with five stars. That's General Omar Bradley, America's last five star general. We've only had five of them. They all came out of World War II, every single one. Walk to the right, the circle of building is the Women's Memorial in honor of their service in and to the military since the American Revolution to the present time. I want to thank all of you for coming today, paying your respects to America's heroes. I've been doing this for several years now, and I've come to the personal conclusion that more than 90% of these great sites are never visited. Many are 150 years old almost. Family lines peter out, families move, children aren't told. While you're coming today, and everybody else who came today, symbolically, it is as if you visited every single gravesite in the cemetery. And if you believe in the upstairs, a lot of happy souls looking down at all of you saying thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for coming today and paying your respects, recognizing the great sacrifice that I made on behalf of our country since the time of the American Revolution to the present time to keep it free and safe. The freest. Thank you.